You know there's something wrong with your serve. There's a really good chance it's your rhythm. Well, today I'm going to break down exactly how you can improve your rhythm on your serve and I'm gonna give you the drills that are going to help and that's not all. I'm also going to keep helping you with your technique so you can solidify your serve to get more power. Let's get to that lesson right now. I see with players, uh, their tempo and their timing is off. They might start really fast and get up here and then slow down, maybe even drop their elbow a little bit, but they don't have an understanding of how to separate the upper body from the lower body as it relates to tempo and rhythm. So there's all this stuff going on and the legs are moving and the arms are moving and the body's moving, but not a lot's really gonna happen. There's not gonna be that effortless power. So what we wanna do is we wanna get the racket moving in a continuous fashion like this and notice I'm not bending my knees. Now my legs are moving, but it's, my legs are moving in sync with my arms. So when my arm goes back, my weight goes to my back foot. My arm goes back, my weight goes to the back foot. And then I shift to the front foot when it's time to swing. Back, front. There's a rhythm to it. Back, front. And then with my tempo, I want to go slow, fast. Slow, fast. Slow, fast fast. Lost my balance on that one, but you get the idea. I'll do it again. Slow, fast. Slow, fast. Better balance on that one. Practice that without the legs, with all the knee bend, with all the arms. Try to get those, that continuous arm moving effortless and easily. Talking about hitting the ball on edge or, or coming to the ball at edge. So with a cont continental grip, when you come up, you wanna have the racket face closed like this, and to get that effortless power, the racket comes up like this, and right at the last moment, the shoulder rotates, and the racket strings square up to the ball. If you open up too early, we call that the waiter tray, if you open up too early, then you're not gonna be able to create effortless power. It's gonna be more of a uh, muscle. You're just coming at the ball like this, but by coming at the ball up, up on edge like this, right at the last moment, boom! That's, that's when you can rotate. This is where the power comes from. This, this, I'm up on edge, 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 boom! Instead of open and pushing. Okay, so that's huge, absolutely huge to be able to develop that skill. So one thing you could do is you could practice actually swinging and trying to hit on edge for a while. Okay, wow, I did it. And then at the last moment, the last moment, then you can square up the racket face. Again, the problem is that players toss the ball and they open the racket face and they're not gonna be able to get that effortless power. We wanna keep it on edge, okay? Racket's on edge and then I square up, then I square up at the end on it. I wanna talk about where I think a lot of rhythm gets messed up and I don't think a lot of coaches have identified this yet. It all starts in the first six inches of the motion. So when players serve, I feel like they make the wrong move at the beginning right here, okay? So basically, you're holding on to the ball, you're getting ready to toss, you're in this full motion position, and then right from here is when the rhythm gets all jacked up. And what happens is a lot of players move too fast right here, and they also move with their arms instead of their shoulders. So that's a big problem, and if we could just eliminate that first move, we could actually start to develop new habits and a new rhythm that is more like what the pros are doing. So what did I do? Well, I simplified it. Simplified it for players after a lot of trial and error. What I do is I put players in what I call a three-quarter serve. So instead of starting here and getting players that I work with to move too fast like this and to not turn their shoulders, I put the racket in this position. I have the strings facing towards the front knee. I'm in this platform stance like this. And I simply toss the ball, and I'm gonna hit a serve right now, I toss the ball, and I just bring the racket up, and I hit the serve. So what this does is it sets the racket in a position, in this three-quarter serve position, where as soon as I make my move, I can feel my shoulder turn, and I can feel the racket go up at the correct tempo. It's much more difficult to bring the racket up really fast if I start from here. For whatever reason, when people start in the full motion, they just get going too fast. And what happens, when you get going too fast, if you have to wait for the toss, you get going fast, 
and then you slow down up near the trophy position. You go fast, and then you have to wait, and then you start again. And the rhythm gets all messed up. So it's very simple. Get into the three quarters serve with your racket here, and when you toss the ball, make sure that you lead with the tossing hand. A lot of players, they actually move this arm too fast and get it up here before they toss the ball. And that really messes, the, messes with the rhythm as well. So if you start here and you lead with the tossing arm and you let this arm follow, that's when you can develop the natural rhythm that you see a lot of the pros doing, okay? Everyone has a little different rhythm and tempo, but this is the baseline that we wanna work with. So we start here and we toss it first, then we bring the racket up and we swing and we hit the ball. So start in that three quarters serve and see if that helps you. Now, the next thing that I wanna point out as it relates to tempo is that you could actually practice what I call the continuous swing, and it's a drill. And what this does is it actually speeds things up a little bit because I feel a lot of players, they do get in this position and then they pause and they wait too long up here. So I prefer to get players to have the racket continue to move throughout. I'm not one of these coaches that, that wants you to feel like you pause or you wait up here. I feel that slows the tempo down. So we wanna keep things moving. So I like to just have the racket move. You see how it's moving continuously like this. It cannot stop at the top. A lot of players now toss the ball and then they wait for it. We don't want that. I want you just to keep the racket moving this will make the toss go a little bit lower than normal. You don't need to use your legs. You can just stand and let the racket move. We don't want it to pause or slow down at any point in the motion. If it pauses naturally and you have a big serve, you know, Fetter has a slight little delay when he gets up here and it works for you, then go ahead and do it. But what I've encountered is that a lot of players, when they swing, they go, they go too fast in here, and then they have to slow down right here. We don't want that. Again, I want more of a slow build. Slow, go. But you'll notice there's no pausing. Slow, go. That's the continuous swing. Okay, we keep things moving. Then we can add some legs. Slow, go. All right, so we've talked about the three-quarter serve how you can start here. We've talked about continuous swings, and then I started talking about this slow go concept, or one, two. You wanna build a rhythm, you can almost count out one, two, or slow go. So listen to how I do slow go and one, two. This is all to develop rhythm. If you verbally say these words or these numbers, it will help you develop the cadence and the rhythm inside your body. Here's slow go. Slow go. That felt really good. Okay, here we go again. Slow go, that felt really good. We don't wanna to get too, going too fast at the beginning. Now here's one, two. One, two. Okay, one, two. So try to sync that up. Try to find that rhythm that works for you and you can, after watching this video, you can get on the court and try to say slow go and one, two. You don't want it to be one, two. You don't want it to be slow go. You want it to be slow go. One, two, okay? So we're focusing on the three quarter serve. We're eliminating this first part of the motion where we go too fast. We're starting here. We're doing continuous swings to develop a continuous rhythm. And then we're focusing on this concept of slow go. You put all this together and your rhythm on your serve is going to improve. In this lesson today, we're gonna to talk about loading this leg, and we're gonna talk about using this hip appropriately. Now, we're going to focus mainly on the platform stance. However, with the pinpoint stance, and I'm gonna point out in a minute, you can do this as well. Now, here's the common problem that I see with a lot of players. Whether they have a platform stance where they jump off of both legs, or they have a pinpoint stance where they move the back foot before serving, players are not able to load their back hip appropriately. And so what happens is a player will bring this foot up and there's no weight on the back foot, all the weight's on the front foot. Or a player will be in a platform stance and when they bend, 
they get all of their weight onto their front foot and not enough on the back foot. So there's not enough drive from the back leg in, through the ground up into the air to hit the serve. So there's a reason for it. Most players physically can't do it. And fortunately, I'm working closely with Racket Fit. We do seminars all over the world helping players and coaches and fitness professionals and medical professionals understand how the body works. So if you're not able to load this leg, if you're not able to actually internally rotate your back hip like this to load, you're not going to be able to do this. And again, this is why a lot of players, I believe, go to the pinpoint stance because they can't load this back leg. They don't have the hip function to be able to load. A lot of players, if they do try to load, they're going to squat like this. And you see this, we call this S posture, where there's an excessive, low, low, uh, excessive curve in the low back. So when players try to load the back leg, they squat. They don't know how to pelvic tilt to get the pelvis forward like this and still load this leg. So one of the things you can do is you can actually practice unweighting the front foot and just do little mini squats like this. And you'll notice my knee is going over my toes here. A lot of players are gonna collapse in like this. Also, if you lack ankle flexibility in this back ankle here, you're also maybe going to wanna to collapse in. So just practice doing mini squats and also practice turning. See how I'm turning into this squat like this. This is going to teach you how to load the back leg. Now notice we haven't hit any serves yet. We haven't hit any shots. We're just working on corrective exercises to load the back leg. Now we have to take it to the next step. You have to be able to use this hip appropriately. And a lot of players, again, they're not able to rotate their pelvis and they're not able to tilt their pelvis like this. They also can't lift their pelvis or their hip. So here's the trick. You want to feel like you're pushing your hip up like this towards that net post. Okay, so this hip is going to lift, but here's what happens when players try to do that. All the weight gets off of the back foot. So this is the, the artistry and the science behind serving efficiently. When you try to lift this hip and make it go forward, you've got to try to keep weight on the back leg. So what I advise is that players practice the mini squat with the turn like this, but then the next drill is to work on lifting this hip like this, okay, but still maintaining weight in the back leg. Okay, you can see I'm just toe tapping the front foot, but I'm keeping this hip up. All right, with this lesson, you should be able to improve your rhythm and your power on your serve with these steps and drills that are gonna give you the clarity you need. But before you go today, I've got a free gift to offer you, and that free gift is a free membership. No credit card details required. All you have to do is click the link in the description below or somewhere in this video to get access to our free membership, which allows you to get 21 lessons on all aspects of your training. I want you to use this inside the Tennis Evolution app, so go ahead and click the link in the description below or somewhere in this video. Thanks.